the, in First John chapter four, uh, we're told that God is love. And uh, one of the strongest examples of the love uh, that we see in the Bible actually is found in the Old Testament. Uh, in the beginning here in Genesis chapter two in verses one through 12, um, we see the, uh, the love of Abraham God and his willingness to sacrifice his son. And uh, of course, this plays into uh, Jesus' sacrifice as well. So I'd like to begin by reading Genesis chapter 2, uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter 22, uh, the first 12 verses. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the lad and I will go on yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Uh, while this is clearly a foreshadowing of Christ's sacrifice for us, uh, we're reminded, you know, of John chapter 3, for God so loved the world that he, that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, we are constantly reminded of the great uh, show of love, excuse, excuse me, that the greatest show of love uh, is sacrifice. In fact, John chapter 15 and verse 9 uh, addresses this. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love hath no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. I find uh, a lot of time on the, on the first day of the week and Sunday morning as I'm preparing my mind for the Lord's Supper that it can be easy to focus on the sacrifice of Christ as, as in the, the pain and the anguish and the suffering that he endured on our behalf. Um, but as we're reminded this morning, it's the love of Christ, the love of God that drove this, um, that he did it for us, for each and every one of us. Uh, but I feel that I'd be remiss if we didn't also read just a few verses here on the sacrifices Christ, uh, of Christ as we uh, again, focus that it, that it was his love that drove him to this. And uh, I think Matthew chapter 27, we'll read just a few verses there. Beginning in verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. And picking up again in verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
And some of those who stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. And the rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. God's love, Christ's love here for us, uh, brings us to, to today. Uh, as, as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, as we are commanded to do so on the first day of the week, um, it's, it's in remembrance of what God has done, remembrance of his sacrifice, of his great love that we've seen from Abraham in the Old Testament carried through to Christ in the New. Um, as we close, I would like to read uh, here in 1 Corinthians 11 on this count of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So let us examine ourselves this morning. Remember Christ's love and his sacrifice as we partake of this Lord's Supper.